Hey guys, it's Ryan back here again, and today I'm reviewing Star Wars The Clone Wars Defend Kamino Battle Pack. So this battle pack has just been recently released. The stories you can currently find it at are Target, and the retail price on this is $19.99. Um, so, as you're thinking probably, is why does this battle pack have three figures? Well, ever since I started collecting back in around late 2004 or early 2005, uh, Hasbro started the Battle Pack program, and it originally had five figures, and it was priced at $19.99. Then, move up to 2008, Hasbro removed one figure, so it was down to four figures, and they raised the price up to $24.99. So now, in 2011, Hasbro has actually taken away one more figure, so it's only now three figures, but they lowered the price again back down to $19.99. Well, you're probably thinking, well, that's a ripoff. Only three figures for 20 bucks? Well, actually, it really isn't. If you think about it, if you divide three into 20, it comes out to be about six and a half. So you're paying about 650 for a figure. Uh, that's without tax. But anyways, it still is cheaper than buying these figures individually. Because if you notice the basic uh, retail price on the uh, basic action figures for the Clone Wars is now up to 799 and the vintage collection is actually up to $8.99 now too so this still is cheaper than buying all these figures individually so I'm not really complaining or anything about that um, so anyways uh, let's go over the packaging first so the one thing I really like about this uh, <clears throat> this packaging for the Defend Camino pack is the background they did a fantastic job um, painting that it's kinda like artwork um, on the back there well it actually is artwork so it's a really nice design and I love all the different features that's going on there. We have some fire off to the left side here. It shows the giant trident squid droids uh, attacking the Kamino buildings. We have a bunch of aqua droids and clones uh, fighting together and there's all a bunch of fla uh, blaster fire going back and forth. You got explosions, gunships up in the air and everything. It's just a really cool packaging. Uh, so anyways, on the back of the box here we also have that same exact um, artwork there but instead it has all the different figures here we have our clone trooper fives arc trooper echo and well, no clone trooper echo and arc trooper blitz over here on the side of the packaging we have the details for the galactic card game and we also have the other battle packs from the same wave which is assault on geonosis the cad bane's escape and the hunt for general grievous and then up here we have a summary and it says Arc Troopers and Clone Troopers from the 501st Legion defend Kamino from a Separatist attack. The elite troopers fight battle droids and swarms the elite troopers fight battle droids that swarm the cloning facility. They arm themselves with blaster pistols and rifles to take on the invading army. Uh, so that's pretty much it for the packaging there. As you also notice, the packaging is actually smaller now. It's really thin. And it's also a bit, I think, it's a little bit um, smaller lengthwise. But for the most part, it's pretty good packaging. So anyways, let's go over these figures and packings that are included. So like it said on the back, you get Arc Trooper Blitz and Clone Trooper Echo. Well, no, that's fives. And this is Clone Trooper Echo. So... And of course, Echo and Fives, they're in their regular armor that you saw in the episode, I believe it was called, Arc Troopers, actually. Um, they are not actually Arc Troopers currently, as you can see. Um, but anyways, um, let's go over the pack-ins and stuff that are included. So of course, you get the cards. Let's see what we have. Five, Echo, and Blitz. Then you get three stands for each one of these figures. A dice and that's all the packings. They also included two extra DC-15, I believe these are A or B, I don't really know, but it's the smaller blaster pistol version of the DC-15 rifle. Um, so you get two extras of these. You also get two more of them for both Echo and Fives. And then the other weapons that are included are the, um, the Arc Troopers blaster rifle. I'm not sure exactly what this one's called, but it's the animated version of it. This wasn't actually in the series, it's just something that was from the original <clears throat> original Clone Wars series, as well as the comic book for the Ark Troopers, but he comes with one of those, and he also comes with two of these uh, rec style blaster pistols that are located in his holsters on his uh, comma here. So, anyways, 
let's go over these figures now. I'll go over the Arc Trooper first. So Blitz, he has a really awesome paint scheme. In my opinion, he's got one of the best paint schemes of, out of all the Arc Troopers in the episode Arc Troopers. And actually, he is the last Arc Trooper that Hasbro has um, needed to make. They made him now. They also had Commander Colt. And there was the other one that had blue armor, but I don't remember his name, but he's the last ARC Trooper that they needed to make, so they have completed that uh, little trio of ARC Troopers now. Uh, so I really like the paint. Um, so you got this yellow detailing here on his uh, pauldron. Uh, you also have some more yellow detailing on the lower portion. Uh, some yellow detailing down here on his legs and on his forearms. Uh, there's also some light gray painting on his uh, lower legs here more light gray right there. They also had these uh, little um, magazine holsters here and if you remember on my Commander Colt review I mentioned that these are very similar to the German uh, MP40 magazines from World War II. Uh, seeing that George Lucas he takes a lot of the designs from a lot of World War II stuff so that's a pretty cool little feature there. Uh, there's also some more yellow detailing on this rangefinder. The rangefinder can actually move up and down. You can pretty much rotate 360 degrees if you want to, but it's a really cool feature that you can move it up and down. It's also a little single yellow uh, stripe going down his face, which looks pretty cool. It's kind of like a battle marking, and it also turns into like a V right here on the side of his helmet. And then the light gray on his helmet, but for paint, that's pretty good. On his uh, comma here, I really like this uh, diamond-shaped design with the black I mean, not the black, the white background. They did a really good job on that, and it looks fantastic on this figure. The paint and everything just mixes really well. Um, on the back here, as you can see, he comes with the um, backpack. And the cool thing about this is it's very similar to the Sand Troopers from A New Hope. Very similar to theirs, uh, their backpacks. But of course, it is removable. It has a peg, and there is a peg hole in the back of the figure's torso. Just plug it in, and there you go. The polderon is also removable. Well, not the polderon. Well, yeah, that is. Uh, that can be removed if you want to. I believe you can take the rangefinder off if you want to as well. Uh, but the comma here, that is not removable. Uh, it's got holsters on both sides, like I mentioned earlier. It's also got these uh, little um, magazine little pouches right here. Uh, so enough about this figure. You know, it's pretty much firm. Articulation, we have a ball-jointed head. Ball hinge shoulders, ball hinge elbows, civil wrist, ball jointed waist, civil hips, ball hinge knees, and ball hinge ankles. So overall, a very good figure, and I really like how he turned out. Now moving on to let's do fives here. So like I mentioned, he comes with the uh, with the submachine gun or the like regular blaster pistol type of the DC-15, but he comes with that, and that's the only accessory he has, aside from his removable helmet, but I'll take that off there. So as you can see, it's the Commander Cody sculpt for the most part, but it has a really cool, nice um, detailing on his head. He has a 5 up on his forehead. That's supposed to be a tattoo, and he also has a little bit of a 5 o'clock shadow, a little bit of a goatee going there, but not quite, uh, but really cool head sculpt. So the helmet itself has a lot of nice blue detailing. I really like this design. There's also a little bit of red detailing as well. And then of course his arms got the 501st blue stripes going down them. He also has this uh, little unique uh, stripe on the side of his thigh here. It's got a little uh, thicker lines and smaller lines put together which looks pretty cool looking. He also has this logo on his uh, shoulder here and that's basically a commemor commemoration to Clone Trooper Heavy. Uh, both him and Echo have this logo on their armor, but he has it on his shoulder and also has a little bit of uh, Arabish writing down there. So, that's pretty much it for paint detailing wise on him. Articulation, we have a ball jointed head, ball hinge shoulders, ball hinge elbows, ball hinge wrists, ball jointed waist, swivel hips, ball hinge knees, and ball hinge ankles. So, super articulated clone trooper for you. Um, Try to get him to stand up. Now on to Echo here. Of course he has his iconic handprint there that was given to him by Captain Rex. That's a really cool feature. Uh, for some reason it's black in this. I'm not sure if he painted over it because um, the original handprint was blood. So he might have repainted over it but uh, I don't remember that. But anyways, um, he also has the uh, blue stripes going down his arms for the 501st Legion. He also has a solid stripe going down his thigh instead of the little dashes like fives over there. But he has that logo like I mentioned earlier uh, on his thigh here. 
and this one's a little bit larger than that one, but it's pretty much the same thing. It's got the airbrush writing on the bottom, and it's got the rotary cannon going through the middle of the circle. Uh, on his helmet here, he's also got some more unique detailing with the blue fin, also these blue lines going down his face, and also the little cheek parts are painted in blue. And of course, the helmet is removable. It's the same exact head sculpt as Fives over there, except it doesn't have anything special about it. No tattoo or any um, facial hair, but that's pretty much it for that. Uh, articulation for him, we have a ball jointed head, ball hinge shoulders, ball hinge elbows, ball hinge wrists, ball jointed waist, hinged well, swivel hips here, ball hinge knees, and ball hinge ankles. So, that's all the figures that you get in this battle pack. You know, it is kind of a little bit disappointing that there's only four this time around, but it is cheaper, and it still is cheaper than buying it from uh, buying them all individually if Hasbro ever did that. But, um, overall, this is a really good battle pack, and I really like how it turned out. Um, you get three brand new clone troopers, as in paint wise, but for the most part, it's the same exact clone troopers that we've seen so far, just with a new deco on them. Uh, so anyways, that's pretty much it for this pack. I'm going to go ahead and rate it a 5 out of 5. You get some really cool troopers, a lot of nice accessories, and some really unique paint jobs on them. Uh, so anyways, that's pretty much it. Hope you guys enjoyed this review, and I'll see you all in the next video.